Hey, what's going on guys? Chris here, checking out another Battlefield 1 weapon, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Madsen Machine Gun, which is a fully automatic LMG that can be used on a support loadout. So the Madsen Machine Gun is a Danish weapon which was first produced in 1902, and is thought to be the first successful LMG to be manufactured in quantity, as considering it was a fairly expensive gun to produce requiring quality ammunition, it was well known for being very reliable. Although it was first adopted by the Danish army in 1902, it was immediately used by the Russians during their war with Japan, just a couple of years later. And not long after, deployed by the German army in 1914 and used in the hands of infantry during the Great War. The Madsen was bought by 34 different countries, made in 12 different calibres and adopted by several armies around the globe, both before and after the First World War, making it a very popular weapon around in the early 1900s. The Madsen was definitely one of the wackier, more unique light machine guns available, featuring those top-mounted box magazines offset slightly to the left side of the gun's receiver, along with a fully automatic falling block mechanism derived from the Martini Henry's design, which is a completely different kind of gun altogether. But despite the Madsen's strange composition, it was still hugely successful, seeing action in both world wars and beyond, all around the world, with the last Madsen guns finally retiring from action in 2008 by the Brazilian police. Though it's thought that the guns are still being used by Brazilian forces in some areas, meaning these historical weapons have been used for over a hundred years and still proven to be effective. So in Battlefield 1, the Madsen MG is a primary support gun, which comes in a total of three different variations, the Trench, Storm and Low Weight, and I'll be comparing these three a little bit more so in just a bit after I've gone over those main weapon stats. Anyway, taking a look at those damage values, we can see that the Madsen's maximum damage reaches the figure of 23 up to 15 meters, which then starts to drop down to just 17.5 beyond 29 meters. This means that the gun's going to need up to 5 bullets to drop another player in those closer proximities, but if your enemy is further away, then it's probably going to take 6. Just like with the other weapons, headshots are going to amp up that damage a bit and you'll require less bullets to kill. These damage readings are exactly the same as the MG15. So one thing that the Madsen has over the MG15 is a slightly quicker rate of fire. Shooting at a speed of 540 RPM, the Madsen is the second fastest firing LMG out of the base game weapons, meaning you'll be able to get those bullets out of the barrel and onto your target quicker and beat quite a lot of the players in one-on-one -on -one gunfights. Because the damage output is pretty good, with a slightly higher maximum damage value than most of the other support guns, combined with that generally speedy fire rate makes the Madsen a powerful LMG for dispatching your opponents nice and easy so long as you can get those bullets to connect with the other player that is. Though this is where the gun's cracks start to show, as its recoil pattern is far from perfect. With an upwards kick of 0.38, along with a horizontal kick of 0.3, this makes the weapon jolt around a fair bit more than a lot of the other slower firing LMGs like the Lewis gun and Bonema C. That upwards kick of 0.38 is almost as much as the Browning rifle, and that horizontal figure is also on the higher side too which is going to force quite a few of your shots off target as you fire away. Though recoil will decrease with prolonged fire, just like the other support guns, meaning it's often best to avoid tap and burst firing, and just go whole hog, mowing down any victims standing in front of you with one lengthy pull of the trigger. Each of those detachable box magazines slotted on top of the gun holds a total of 31 rounds, which is often enough to get the job done. The main problem with the Madsen's magazines isn't really the amount of bullets that they can hold, but instead their actual position on top of the gun. Let's just be honest, those magazines can really get in the way at times, blocking off a portion of the screen on the right when aiming from the hip, and also on the left when aiming down sights, and this view obstruction can sometimes be a bit of a pain in the ass. Although the gun's totally usable, and this factor probably won't bother some people, to a lot of the others it's going to be a bit of a distraction, and although statistically the Madsen is a fairly solid weapon, this magazine positioning could turn quite a few players off using it. Now, like I said before, there's three different variants of the gun, which all slightly alter how the weapon plays out. The Madsen Low Weight gives the gun a bipod, which is best used for locking down in defensive positions, and it's also going to affect some of the weapon stats too, allowing the gun to recover from spread and recoil faster with a 67% quicker recoil decrease, along with a 200% faster spread decrease when hip firing. So basically, this means that it's going to be better suited for bursting shots together, instead of holding down the trigger which might let you get more bullets to land on target further away a bit easier, with the gun sights resetting back to their original position faster. As for the Storm variant, this will directly affect the gun's recoil pattern, lowering it by 30%, dropping that vertical figure of 0.38 down to 0.26, and that horizontal figure of 0.3 to just 0.21. It's also going to have slightly less spread when hip firing than the low weight version too, 
although making the gun a bit more stable and easier to use. This should feel noticeably more accurate, and might allow you to get more bullets to land on target, and with the Madsen machine gun having a fairly erratic recoil pattern as it is, lowering it down is definitely going to help you out a lot when going up against your enemies. But last of all is that trench variant, which is the one to use if you like to fire from the hip. It's got the lowest spread increase per shot whilst hip firing, along with 33% less base spread than the other two variants whilst hip firing also, making the gun's hip fire a lot more accurate. Because of that quick fire rate and high close range damage, this transforms the weapon, making it better suited in CQC, allowing you to avoid aiming down sights altogether, and gun down your opponents on the move with that much improved hip fire accuracy instead, with some pretty effective results. So all in all, the Madsen MG is a fairly well rounded weapon, boasting some decent damage values and a speedy fire rate to boot. Its recoil pattern isn't exactly the steadiest, which might make it a bit harder to stay on target, and take on your opponents at those further distances. And although it's not exactly got a low ammo capacity per magazine, the magazines themselves can sometimes get in the way and become a bit of an issue, blocking off some of your much needed vision. Though generally despite these problems, the Madsen can perform pretty good, as it's reliable in most enemy encounters, though it's probably going to shine the most against targets at those closer to medium distances. But anyway, that's all I've got for you this time guys, hope you enjoyed the video, hit that like button on your way out if you did, and subscribe for loads more content in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next one.